This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to talk about my dog Jesse's bad back and in particular his condition, degenerative myelopathy. So this is my older dog Jesse here. Jesse is 16, he's a Portuguese water dog cross. He's been fairly healthy most of his life, but as he's nearing the end of his years, He's developed a number of different medical conditions. Uh, in particular, about three or four months ago, I did notice that he started to be progressively weaker on his rear end. So what I was finding is he would walk and he would stumble. Or within the last few months, he's gotten especially slow. He's had difficulty going up the stairs, had challenges going down, down the stairs. So what's happened is not only is he weak walking around, sort of stumbling, he'll often stumble with the rear legs, at times with his front legs, is in terms of examining him, I'm able to find out that he actually is fairly comfortable. I can pull his hips back, he doesn't really resist it, he doesn't yelp, bend his knees, they don't to be sore, put moderate pressure on the lower part of his back, it's not seemingly uncomfortable. So he doesn't, he's not fitting with the traditional symptoms of something such as hip dysplasia or arthritis in his lower back causing these signs, this weakness. So then when I do a more thorough exam, um, one of the tests of part of the neurologic exam is checking his neurologic reflexes. So there's one called knuckling where you bend his paw over and you can see here with Jesse you bend his paw, see how he's leaving his paw folded under itself? It took him quite a long time. Um, that's a test and that's called knuckling. It's a test called proprioception. And normally what happens as soon as his paw, we take a normal dog whose nerves are functioning normally, as soon as you bend those paw underneath itself, he should, his instantly he should get signals from his brain and he should flip it up instantly. There should be no delay, but if there's a delay, that's called knuckling, and that's suggestive of a neurologic condition. I want to show you Jesse on his left side and his left rear leg. So I'm going to check the, the proprioception again. So that's the knuckling, knuckling reflex on that left paw. And you can see there, I've folded the paw over itself. He has no response at all. So in, in doing that, I mean, he's clearly got some sort of neurologic disorder going on where those that sense that comes from this foot is not making its way to his brain which is then causing that automatic reflex is not happening. So based on Jesse's neurologic exam, his progressive weakness, which is now progressed to stumbling not just on the rear legs, also the front legs, he has no signs of pain. The most likely diagnosis is a condition called degenerative myelopathy. Degenerative myelopathy is a progressive disease of the spinal cord in older dogs. The disease onset typically is between 8 and 14 years of age. It begins with a loss of coordination in the rear limbs. Your dog may wobble when walking. There can be knuckling of the feet over or dragging of the feet. As the disease progresses, there is difficulty standing. The weakness will get progressively worse until many dogs are unable to walk. A big key mark of this disease is that it's non-painful. This is an x-ray that I did of my dog Jesse's back and on it you can see he does have some changes within his spine and if you look at the front part of the x-ray, the upper part of the lumbar vertebrae, you'll see fusion between those vertebrae. So he's got a condition called spondylosis. But that condition won't explain his progressive loss of weakness as, that he has or the other neuro neurologic changes, the knuckling. There is degeneration of the white matter of the spinal cord. The white matter contains fibers that transmit movement commands from the brain to the limbs and sensory information from the limbs to the brain. So that's why when I bend over Jesse's foot, that's called that proprioceptive test called knuckling, he doesn't respond. Those fibers are not working, they're not sending the correct signals, hence there's a lack of response. The diagnosis is based out on ruling out other neurologic diseases. The most important key finding is that it's progressive disease and it's non-painful. So if your dog has been diagnosed with degenerative myelopathy, what can you do? Um, traditionally, conventionally veterinary medicine, there's very little you can do. Um, because what's happening is we're actually having a degeneration of sections of the spinal cord. So we're just losing that, that loss of that sensory and motor nerves 
hence the, lot, the lack of the reflexes and the stumbling and the weakness. But there are a number of different supplements you can look at, and there's four in particular that I've focused on and that I'm giving Jesse. The first thing is a quality multivitamin mineral mix. In particular, you want to have a supplement that's going to have additional B vitamins. And the B vitamin in particular is B12. You know, that's a very important B vitamin for normal nerve function. That happens to be my supplement, Ultimate Canine Health Formula, as it is with many other supplements. I also have additional antioxidant vitamins, which I know are potentially beneficial in any of the degenerative and inflammatory diseases. But in particular, you need to have a supplement that's got additional B12, and that's within my supplement here. The next thing, you want to look at adding in additional essential fatty acids. I have EFAs in the form of my supplement, but I want to increase the dose in Jesse because I know regardless of the underlying cause of degenerative myelopathy, be it degeneration, be it infl inflammation based, I know that the EFAs potentially can be beneficial and won't do no more harm. Flax oil is the easiest way to give it. For something like Jesse, I'm just putting a tablespoon on his food twice a day, so in the morning and in the evening. Then I want you to look at adding in additional curcumin. So this is the 95% curcuminoids. Um, this, this comes as a 400 milligram capsule. And he's, Jesse is currently getting one of these a day. And primarily, the, the beneficial effect of curcumin is that it is anti-inflammatory. So you know if, there's a, if there is an inflammatory component based on the spinal cord degeneration, it's going to be beneficial. And of all the different herbs that we discuss and that we use for inflammation, curcumin is the, the most important one. But you got to make sure it's, it's the concentrated form, the 95% curcuminoids, that is then can be broken down in your dog's stomach and then made available. So alpha lipoic acid is found throughout every cell in your pets and your own body. And what it is, it helps turn the sugar uh, into energy within the cells itself. But what we're finding is that it's one of the only antioxidants which is not just water soluble, it's water soluble and fat soluble. I mean it can penetrate water tissues and penetrate these fatty tissues. So it meaning it can get into every cell in the body and in particular um, can get into the, the spinal cells themselves and that's where we're wanting it to get to. We know there's inflammatory processes going on that are causing this degener de degeneration in the spinal cord. And that's sort of one, anti one antioxidant we know if it's given in high enough concentrations can get in there and potentially delay the progression of what's happening. Um, when we're looking at dose, we're looking at about one milligram per kilo. So for something like Jesse, um, he's, he, he's about 20 kilos, so we'll be looking at about 20 milligrams given twice a day. Um, I'm actually upping his dose a little bit more, so I'm giving him one of these 100 milligram capsules once a day. There's a couple other things I want to show you for degenerative myelopathy and just support of, of any older dog who is having difficulty walking, be it from arthritis and hip dysplasia, be it from arthritis and knee dysplasia, be it what's going on in their back, or something degenerative such as Jesse has. The other big thing is doing some of these um, touch therapies, which potentially can help him and will do no harm. And I feel they are being beneficial to Jesse. When I'm doing regular acupressure, there's two, two sort of key points that I'm focusing on. One is called you know, the GV4 point. And to find that, I find Jesse's last rib goes straight up from his last rib, that's a 13th rib, and there's a depression between the vertebrae, that's sort of between L2, L3. And so I'll put my middle finger there and I'll hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. And at the same time, I'll put my hand backwards and I'm going to count five rib spa five spaces between those vertebrae. So five vertebrae, vertebrae spaces back. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And that, and that takes me to L7S1. And that's called the GB20 point. And so what I'm trying to do, at the very least once a day in the evening, is just hold those two points in conjunction. And I can also feel a bit of a throbbing just underneath both of my fingers, the right and my left hand. So that tells me that I'm in a fairly key acupressure points. And those two in particular, because what we're doing is we're thinking of the Chinese medicine theory of disease and that there's an obstruction in energy flow, and by doing that, we're touching these acupressure points, 
helping normalize that energy flow again. And I find when I do do the acupressure more regularly, Jesse responds and actually seems to be walking better. The last thing I will want you to have to do is doing a little bit of therapy, be it physical therapy or be it massage. Because we know in doing that, we still need to have his muscles working. We need those muscles at least to be compensating for that lack of nerve function. So one, just making sure you're just pull, going through the range of motion with your dog. You know, pulling those legs back and forth. I mean, I grab it at his knee, I extend and flex that hip joint. Other, I'll grab his leg lower down at his hock, move that knee up and down. So I want to make sure that he's moving those legs, he's moving those joints. And then in terms of massage, I make just the key points. I'm using my thumb and forefinger, and I'll just massage around, especially focusing on the lower lumbar spine. And I'll just do these circular motions on either side of his back, just really loosening up that back. And then at the next point, is that we're also really focus on these big muscle bellies, the big quadricep muscles. They're attached up by the hip joint here, and the big gluteal muscles, and the ones that sort of run, run along the back of his thigh, the semimembranosus, semitendinosus. All these big muscle bellies that go on either side of the femur, they go into form the hip itself. I just want to make sure that they are free of any knots, and he has every reason as possible to use them. And I just find when I sort of do those in combination, I do that acupressure, I do that massage, he is able to move more easier, and he definitely seems more comfortable. So there's sort of a number of different remedies that I would encourage you to try if you have a dog that has degenerative myelopathy. Thank you for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. What I want you to do right now is click that link. That link below, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and get my new report on pet food, the top food advised to feed your dog.